Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today we're going to be looking at some questions of VIT Triple E and find out their solutions as we go along. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at some previous year questions of the VIT Triple E exam. We're going to be looking at physics questions from the 2010 edition of VIT Triple E. So let's start off. A straight wire carrying current I is turned into a circular loop. If the magnitude of magnetic moment associated with it in MKS unit is M, the length of wire will be 4 pi divided by M, under root of 4 pi M divided by I, under root of 4 pi I divided by M, or M pi divided by I. So, how do we solve this question? The first thing to note is that the straight wire is turned into a circular loop. This means that the length of the straight wire, which is L, will be equivalent to 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circular loop. So, r, which would be the radius of the circular loop, can be written down as L divided by 2 pi. Now, how do we find the area of the circular loop. The area of a circle is pi times the square of its radius. In this case, that will be pi times L square divided by 4 pi squared. So the pi, 1 pi gets cancelled from the numerator and the denominator. So what we get is L square divided by 4 pi as the area of the circular loop. Now how do we calculate the magnetic moment of a circular loop? The magnetic moment of a circular loop is the current passing through that circular loop times the area of that circular loop. So in this case, the current is still I, and the area is L square divided by 4 pi. The magnetic moment in MKS units is written as M. So that will be our left hand side. We need to find out the length of the wire. Well, all we have to do is simply rearrange the terms here. L square goes on the left hand side and the right hand side becomes 4 times pi times the magnetic moment divided by the current. Taking the square root of both sides, you get the length of the wire as equal to under root of 4 pi M divided by I. Now this means option B turns out to be the right option. Now let's look at another question. The ratio of the amounts of heat developed in the four arms of a balanced Wheatstone bridge where the arms have resistances P equals 100 ohms, Q equals 10 ohms, R equals 300 ohms and S equals 30 ohms respectively is. And we've got four ratios given in the options. We need to find out which of these is the correct option. So in a balanced Wheatstone bridge, we have four arms, P, Q, R, and S. P is equivalent to 100 ohms, Q is equivalent to 10 ohms, R has the resistance 300 ohms, and S has the resistance 30 ohms. Now, um, the resistance of the, to the arm complex that is PQ is basically the addition, the sum of the two resistances. Since P and Q are connected in series, um, we can just add their resistances to get the total resistance. So arm PQ would give us 110 ohms of resistance. Similarly, the arm RS would be 300 plus 30, that is equal to 330 ohms. Now, let's find out the current passing through one arm in the Wheatstone bridge. So, current passing through the arm PQ 
would be given as I1, and it is equal to I, that is the total current, times the resistance of the arm RS, divided by the total resistance, which basically is R of PQ plus R of RS. Now, when we substitute our values here, I1 will be equal to 330 I divided by 110 plus 330. So basically you get 330 over 440 times I, which means I1 is equal to 3 by 4 times I. So three-fourths of the total current pass through P and Q. Now let's look at the current passing through RS. We're using a similar idea here. So I2, which is the current passing through RS, will be the total current times the resistance in PQ. Divide that by the sum of the two resistances. So RPQ plus R of RS. Now in this case, um, it'll be equal to 110 I divided by 110 plus 330, which is equal to 110 over 440 times I, which means that I2 is equal to one-fourth of I. I1 is three-fourth of I, and I2 is one-fourth of I. So now that we know what fraction of the current passes through the two arms, we're just going to use the formula for heat divided by time, or heat per second. Now that is equal to I square R. Now how do we get that? One of the formulas for heat generated is I square times R times T. We just put the T on the left hand side, that will give you heat per second, which is equal to I square R. So in order to find the ratio between the heat produced in P and then produced in Q, produced in R, and produced in S. So the ratio of the heat produced across each of the four resistances will be written as P has three-fourths of the current passing through it. So that'll be 3 by 4 I, the whole squared, times 100, which is the resistance of P. Um, for Q, it'll be the same, 3 by 4 I, the whole squared. However, this time the resistance is just 10. Then you have R, in whose case it's one-fourth of the current passing through, and the resistance this time is 300. And then finally, you have for S, one-fourth of the current is passing through, that gets squared, and then times the resistance, which is 30. So, when we look at the right-hand side again, 3 squared gives you 9. Um, so you get... Um, so basically what happens is here is 4 squared and I squared gets cancelled from all the terms. So what you get is 900 is to 90 is to 300 is to 30. So over here, the shortest form of this would be just to divide the whole um, ratio by 30. So 900 divided by 30 gives you 30, 90 divided by 30 gives you 3, 300 divided by 30 gives you 10, and 30 over 30 is 1. So 30 is to 3 is to 10 is to 1 is the ratio of the heat produced in each of the four resistances in a balanced Wheatstone bridge. So therefore, Option B turns out to be the right option. So this is, in fact, the right option among the four options given. 30 is to, is to 3 is to 10 is to 1. Now let's look at the final question for the day. An electric kettle takes 4 amperes of current at 220 volts. How much time will it take to boil 1 kilogram of water from a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, and it is said that the temperature of boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius. 
Is it 12.6 minutes, 4.2 minutes, 6.3 minutes, or 8.4 minutes? So, how do we solve this question? Now, the heat required to boil, so wait, so the formula here that we're going to use is the formula for the heat required to see a change in temperature for an object of mass M. So that formula would be H is equal to M times C times delta T. M stands for the mass. C stands for the specific heat capacity. And delta T is basically the change in temperature, so final temperature minus initial temperature. So, um, we know that the mass in this case is 1 kilograms because that's given in the question. And since we know that it's water that's being heated, the C value for water is 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius. And we know that delta T here is 100 degrees minus 20 degrees, which will give you a total of 80. So the value of heat in this case is M times C times delta T, which when we add the values would be 1000 grams times one um, calorie per gram degree Celsius times 80. So 1000 times 80 calories is the heat that is released. Now let's hold this for a moment. Now here we're using electricity to produce heat. So we have another formula for the heat produced in a time t. So heat produced in a time t is given as V times I times t, which in this case is voltage times amplitude times the current in amperes times the time taken in order to heat it up to that particular temperature. So um, we know that there's 4 amperes of current and the voltage is at 220 volts. So therefore, the value of heat will be equal to 220 times 4 T. This is the second equation. Now we're going to equate these two equations. So we know that both of them have the same left hand side, which means that the right hand side of both of these equations have to be equal to each other. Now what does that mean? It means that 220 times 4 T will be equal to 1000 times 80. So all you have to do in order to find the, temp the time that it takes to boil 1 kilograms of water is to take T on the left hand side and put everything else on the right. So you have 1000 times 80 divided by 220 times 4 T. Now this is what it look, looks like at first glance, right? Actually, we kind of overlooked something here. Heat that was given from the temperature change formula was in calories. So this is in calories. However, the second equation gives us the heat in joules. So we need to convert it. So all we have to do is heat equals 220 times 40 over 4.18. Now that's the magic number, which be, that is because 1 joule equals 4.18 calories. So in order to convert it to calories, you have to divide it by 4.18. So um, if we erase all of this and go back to the equation step, where we are equating the two equations. So this here is equation 2 and that's what we have to equate. So basically 220 times 4t over 4.18 is equal to 1000 times 
80. That means T will be equal to 1000 times 80 times 4.18 divided by 220 times 4. Now this will give us in the numerator since 4.18 is just 418 divided by 100. So by working that, so by multiplying 100 to 4.18, the numerator now becomes 80 times 10 times 418. And you will divide that by 220 times 4. So all you have to do is you know, um, one of the zeros gets cancelled uh, from the numerator and the denominator. 80 divides 4 20 times. I mean, 4 divides 80 20 times. And a 2 gets cancelled from the numerator and the denominator. So what we have is 10 times 4180 divided by 11. So the time taken will now be equal to 4180 divided by 11. So when you do that quick division, so you will get um, 380 seconds as the time taken. So our final answer for the time that it takes to boil one kilogram of water is 380 seconds. However, all the options are given in minutes, so we'll have to convert it. So one minute is 60 seconds, so 360 seconds would be make it six minutes. And then you have 20 seconds left over. Now, since one minute is 60 seconds, that means a third of a minute would be um, 20 seconds. So that means the time will be approximately equal to 6.3 minutes. So therefore, option C, 6.3 minutes, turns out to be the right option. Now that concludes this episode of VIT Triple E. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Brain Blitz Audience. You can also hit the bell icon that's present down below in order to get the latest updates from our channel. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.